Welcome, my big game breakdown, Utah State and Santa Clara. The Aggies head on the road, a one or one and a half point favorite. Now, Utah State, not quite sure what they were expecting this year. All five starters departed. They bring in new head coach, Danny Sprinkle from Montana State. He goes out, brings out a couple of his best players, an Oregon transfer, and a couple other guys that have had this team jump out to a 9-1 and straight-up start. And their only defeat was an overtime loss at Bradley as a dog in which they failed to cover the spread by a half a point, failing to cover a five-point loss in overtime. Uh, so it's a situation where we're looking at a team that first road game early in the season, beginning of November, New team, completely understand that. Since that time, they've covered five of six. And boy, is this team efficient on offense. In fact, they are number 17 in effective field goal percentage. They have a lineup that every player has started every game. They have covered five of their last six, and they've done so with an offense that has shot 56, 57, 51, 60, and 52% their last five games. Santa Clara started off the season on a 6-0 run. Two good wins. They beat Stanford on the road. Not a great win, but a decent win. And then knocking off Oregon in a neutral setting by far their best win. But since that time, they fell to Ohio State. They fell to California. And against New Mexico, they had 26 turnovers in that game. And they allowed 52% shooting. You know, Sprinkle at Montana State, I love this guy. He took him to NCAA tournaments the last two years. He has the team playing very well. And what I do like about Utah State is you look at their numbers. They are number 298 in three-point offense. So this team, a rare team in college basketball that doesn't shoot threes, but they're number five in two-point efficiency. Why are they still so successful? Well, guess what? They're bad at three-pointers, and they just don't shoot them. They're number 316 in three-point percentage attempts. So, again, they try some of the fewest, and while they're poor, again, it doesn't matter if you're bad if you don't take three-point shots. Their three-point defense is a top 50 as far as Ken Palm ratings. And you look at Santa Clara. Santa Clara likes to press the pace on offense. They like to slow the pace when teams are bringing up the ball, but they do turn the ball over quite a bit. They don't force turnovers. I think the Utah State win streak continues. Lay the point or point and a half with the Aggies as they gather their ninth straight win. That's the nation's eighth longest win streak. Jimmy Adams here with a big game breakdown, and we're taking a look at Creighton UNLV. And this is essentially a home game for the Rebels. It's being played in Henderson, which is literally right down the road. But that being said, even with it being a home game, I wouldn't put too much stock in that, as the Rebels generally don't have much fan support as it is. And they're going to need all the help they can get, because this is a Creighton team that is on an absolute mission right now, fresh off hanging 109 on Central Michigan. I understand that's not a very good team, but Prior to that, the Blue Jays went to Nebraska, they won by 29, and they went to Oklahoma State and beat them by 14. So going on the highway has not been a problem for this squad whatsoever. They're shooting over 40% from three and have the third highest percentage in the nation from inside the arc as well. Uh, they can really score and disrupt you in the paint, and that all starts with seven foot one Ryan Kalkbrenner. We all know how good he is. He's been doing this for Creighton for years. And Creighton's been covering in the heavy chalk role as well. They have a 7-2 and two mark ATS. But this minus 13, they've been covering numbers like these for their backers all season long. That has not been the case for the Rebels, who are 2-5 and five ATS. They've lost their last four against the number, and they've dropped three of their past four straight up. And remember, UNLV started the season by losing at home to Southern University by 14. They have some serious red flags for me here, such as a terrible three-point shooting defense that ranks 357th in the nation. They're 335th in effective field goal percentage overall on the defensive end. So 
against a Creighton team that can really knock down the three, that three-point defense is certainly going to come into play. Creighton goes into Henderson and dominates this game from start to finish. Give me the Blue Jays for today's big game breakdown. Steve Merrill back here breaking down a big game breakdown for you at the end of the board tonight. It's a late game at 8 o'clock Eastern, bottom of the regular betting rotation, the Von Braun Center in in Alabama, but still basically a home game for Auburn. And it's UNC Asheville, a team we don't talk about too much on the show, making the trip to play Auburn. And Asheville just 5-5 and on the season, mediocre team. Auburn 6-2. and Normally you'd say they might overlook this game, but the fact that it's a semi-neutral court site, different setting, I actually think Auburn will be focused for this game especially since they lost a couple games to go to Appalachian State and then bounced back with a big win on a neutral against Indiana uh, by 28 points this past Saturday. I actually think they keep that momentum going, even with USC on deck coming up this Sunday. Many might consider this a sandwich situation, but the neutral court, different venue, I think will have them motivated, and they're just not going to be able to help but win by margin. This is a UNC Asheville team that's playing away from home now for the third straight time over the past week. Uh, Lost to Kennesaw by three. And then a bad loss by 15 against Western Carolina uh, this past Saturday. It's just a three and a half point dog. Other thing I like here is that Auburn's a fantastic defensive team this season, allowing just 38% shooting from the field and exceptionally strong from three point defense, allowing just 27 and percent beyond the arc. And that's the only chance a big underdog like Asheville has of keeping it close is to hit some threes, but unfamiliar setting on the road. I don't think that happens tonight. And that allows Auburn to extend the lead. If you're going to play it, I would lay it. Lay the 19 and a half. Opening line was 18. Sharp money quickly bet it up overnight to 19 and a half. And I agree with that move. Uh, by the way, the total has also been bumped up quite a bit from 147 up to 151 here on Wednesday. Uh, so there has been some sharp money on the over as well. Uh, I do think Auburn will dictate the tempo here and force a bit of a faster paced game uh, than UNC Asheville is probably comfortable with. Asheville likes a slower tempo, but once again, when they get behind, they're not going to be able to play a slowdown half-court game, and I think this one gets out of hand. So both Auburn and the over is probably the way to play it. Top recommendation would be Auburn minus 19 and a half when this game tips off tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern. Best bet from Ralph Michaels for Wednesday, December the 13th. We're going to lay almost four touchdowns with the BYU Cougars. Now, remember, college basketball is not college football. You start November and the beginning of December undefeated. One loss is not bubble burst. BYU started the season 8-0. Didn't play a very difficult schedule. In fact, their top opponent prior to the Utah game was San Diego State, a good team, top 35 team at home. And then they played Arizona State in a neutral setting. So after an 8-0 start, a very efficient 8-0 start, last Saturday they go to Utah, a close game, They do end up losing that game. Again, first road games, I completely understand. This is a team that averaged over 50% shooting. Utah, a a physical defensive team. BYU shot 37%. But when I went to the post game and and read some some quotes, I really liked what I, I heard from Pope. Pope said he didn't leave Saturday's contest against Utah dejected, having a He said, I'll argue it's the most upbeat feeling I've had after a loss for the program. He said he was passionate about their hustle. And yes, poor shooting happens in a game. Those are the games you're going to lose, but you also expect to bounce back. BYU is number eight in scoring offense and scoring defense. The margin, average margin of victory, 29 points per game. That is number two in the country. Now, the Denver Pioneers are a bottom half team. Ken Palm has them in the 230s, 240 ranges. You look at their schedule. They have covered four games this year. At home against Cal Poly, neutral game against Nickel State, at Texas A&M Commerce as a small dog, and then at Colorado State, where they shot 51%. They were in that game early, and then they faded away as they allowed the Rams to shoot 60%. They did cover that game. But I found this interesting reading the Denver notes. This is the first time Denver has played ranked teams in back-to-back games in 25 years. So you're coming off Colorado State. The next week you go to BYU. Now, Denver is a decent rebounding team. And in the games that they can out-rebound their opponents, they have managed to stay in the games. In fact, Ken Palm has them number 71 in offense, 
and number 124 in defensive rebounding. The issue here, BYU is the number one rebounding team in the country, number 15 on offense, number seven on defense. And you look at BYU, they do have uh, K. Rohr out. He's missed the last couple games, but they've gone to a, a smaller lineup. It hasn't affected them one bit. If you include Treyer, they have six players averaging in double figures. When you have that type of spread in your offense, you're not going to have a bad shooting day. It's rare that all five players that can score the points all fail to score in the same game. Those are the type of teams you want when you're laying this type of number. BYU continues to impress. They play very fast tempo. When they do bring in their subs, uh, they play in the same format. So uh, this is a team where I do expect them. Turnover-wise, they don't turn the ball over. They do force turnovers on D. They're, uh, they block the ball. I, they're number four in blocks. I mean, this team is talented. The, the front line, 6'11", and 6'11", they got two guys that they could bring in when they want to play big. Trey Stewart is an extra point guard when Dalen Hall needs uh, rest. Great balance, great depth. BYU really is a top 10 team in my power ratings. And I expect them to bounce back after that loss and cover this hefty, hefty spread at home. We are headed to Starkville for today's best bet as Mississippi State hosts a Murray State team that is in an absolute downward spiral. The Racers have now lost five of their past six, and they've scored just 49 points in their last game against Austin P on Saturday. They shot just 19 of 51 from the field in that contest. So the question really becomes, how are the racers going to be able to go on the road and score against one of the nation's top defenses in Mississippi State? Bulldogs rank third in the country in adjusted defensive efficiency. They're giving up just 90 points per 100 possessions. They're fantastic when it comes to pretty much all their analytics on the defensive side, particularly guarding the three-point line where they're allowing their opponents to shoot just 25%. Uh, Murray State struggles from outside anyway, so things are just going to get worse if they try to attempt threes tonight. I wouldn't expect them to hit many of those. And they also play at an extremely tempo, which is something that's very important here because I expect a lot of points to be scored. They'll have a lot of missed shots without many second chance opportunities. So this real this handicap, like I said, it comes down to how much is Mississippi State going to score here? The Bulldogs were in a bit of a rut prior to their last game. They scored just 59 in back-to-back -back outings versus Georgia Tech and Southern. They did get back on track with a big outing last time out, but Mississippi State has cashed the under in four of their past five games. And given the slow pace that Murray State brings and their uh, problems on offense, I expect the Bulldogs to get out to an early lead here. Maybe they take their foot off the gas if they have a big lead late. But either way, um, not many points coming from the Racers. And Mississippi State primarily focuses on defense. Give me the under in the Murray State-Mississippi State matchup tonight. Let's look at a free college basketball play for tonight on Wednesday, December the 13th. Going to get to that in just a moment. Want to let you know we won again last night in the NBA. All sports now on a 24-9 and run. NBA 14 and five over the past month. That's number one at wager talk. And it's no surprise. Nobody in 2023 going back all the way to January 1st has won more units in the NBA than I have up over 132 net units this calendar year in the NBA college and pro football sides. Number one rank combined the last two years at wager talk. Also number one ranking just a couple years ago in college hoops off to a great start this season. Going to give you my top opinion in college hoops tonight free in just a moment, but that's because my official best bet tonight comes in the NBA as we look to improve in that 24-9 and nine current run the last couple of weeks. But got to remind you once again, you know, the cat's out of the bag. Wager Talk let everybody know that I turned 50, and it is official. I got the birthday candles to prove it. So we're going to do something special. Since I'm halfway, halfway to 100, you get 50% halfway off any, 50% half off any package, any subscription this week by using promo code HALFWAY on my page, stevemerrillwagertalk.com. That can be a one day, a one week, a one month, even a one year. We had several people already this week lock up that one year all sports all access and save a thousand dollars instantly. That is a smart move right there. Got to use that promo code though, halfway, H A L F W A Y, halfway for 50% discount this week only on any subscription. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All 
All right, let's get to a free play tonight. It's on the extra board in college hoops and tips off at 6.30 Eastern. Going to take a look at Stony Brook, minus the two points against Norfolk State. I'll see William & Mary, my tribe, play Stony Brook this year in the CAA, and I saw Norfolk State blow out the tribe a few weeks ago. Um, very impressive win by 34 points last week on November 28th, a couple weeks ago, rather. And keep in mind, William & Mary is down about six scholarship players for that game, so I don't want to read too much into it. Yes, the follow-up win against Virginia Commonwealth was impressive as a 12-point road dog, and then they go into Illinois State, beat them as a six-point dog. But now Norfolk State is playing their third straight road game over the past couple of weeks after back-to-back -back road upset wins. Not a good spot here, and the line is too short because of it. I like Stony Brook here, minus the two points at home. This is a difficult trip also uh, for Norfolk State going all the way up to the Northeast, especially since it's their third straight road game after two upset wins. And Norfolk State gets most of their points down low. Not a very good three-point shooting team. They don't take a lot of threes, only shoot 32% from the field. Stony Brook's weakness this year has been their three-point defense, but they have a strong interior defense that's given up a, really a, a good amount of points from three this year, not from two-point range. So I think the matchup is good here. And I also think Stony Brook will shoot a lot better at home than Norfolk State does tonight um, and look for Stony Brook to extend this lead in the second half. And by the way, I know Norfolk State upset Illinois State, but it looks like there are signs they're fatiguing. Norfolk State shot just 36% from the field. And then some neutral court site games about a month earlier shot 37% or less in four straight games. I look for another bad shooting tonight on the road here, third game in five days, or second game in just five days, and I don't think it works out well for them. Stony Brook, minus two, a free play for you tonight at 6.30 Eastern on the extra board. Don't forget, my top best bet tonight comes in the NBA, another NBA moneymaker for Wednesday. We look to extend on that 24-9 and nine best bet run over the past couple of weeks. And if you want to save and win consistently, now's the week to do it with that half-price, 50% instant discount with promo code HALFWAY. Use it right now. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com.